Hey, welcome to the Chronicle YouTube channel. I'm Buster Brown, your host. And today, my guest is an awesome young man. I say phenomenal. Thank you. you know, uh, Murray Miller. Murray, uh, you are the national Big Brother of the Year. That's correct. National. National. For the whole entire country. I mean, that's huge. Oh, yes, it is. That's huge, man. How are you doing, man? I'm great. Doing good. Uh, yeah. Been Busy for the last two yeah. months. Good. <laughs> you know, you're, and you're a busy man, branch manager at Credit Union. Yes. Um, and we're doing the interview in your office, and I don't mind people passing through, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, so they can see how busy things are. Exactly. Um, yes. What does a branch manager do? I run the entire branch operations, frontline right. operations, consist of tellers, loan officers, right. new account reps, phone the call center, and the internal support, right. also readers, and all sorts of problem solving. Right. I do a little bit of everything. You pretty much handle you you're the president. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um twelve years, that's a long time, man. Yes. Uh, what are some of the struggles when you work with a credit union or banking? Uh some of the struggles is really getting over the the social economic barrier. Right. We 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 have a group of people who bank here from each level of the state, mm -hmm. each both sides of it. And to have find that happy medium and to be able to explain the products and services mm -hmm. to the members and make sure everybody's treated fairly right. and understand thrift and may, and really take their financial literacy level to another level. Right. And when you said fair, you emphasize that. Why? Yeah, fair because you look around not just North Carolina, but mm -hmm. the country as a whole. Right. Banks and credit unions have been in trouble before and uh, some deposit holders haven't been treated fairly especially in your loan services. Mm -hmm. We make sure everybody's given a fair chance to uh, obtain loans and also a fair chance in just education on how to bank right? to avoid all the fees and penalties. So when you do get a chance to meet some of your customers, you educate them. Oh, yes. And you recommend yes. that your staff do the same. It, exactly. That's when, good. when I train here, I train them to go the extra mile. That's Ask good. the right questions. Pull out of them what's, what's not there. Right. And then when you, when you find that void, fill that void. Right, with some knowledge. See, that leadership is already in you, man. <laughs> and then you decided to become uh, a big brother. Now, before yes. you became a big brother, you were already doing some type of mentoring. Yes. Okay. Um, I taught inmates, a group of guys right. in our county jail. Mm -hmm. I taught for 20 years, actually. Um, we started out teaching Bible study. Right. In a life skills class component. Right. Uh, and I'm also I'm a math instructor at Forsyth Tech. But I ran their GD program in the county jail for four of those years. Oh wow! And I I thoroughly enjoyed that. And <laughs> but I I I kind of grew kind of got frustrated not with teaching inmates, but with um, the fact that there were so many young men coming to jail, and mm. I, I just I was just frustrated. Like I asked myself a question in teaching class one night. I asked myself the guys. I got real quiet, and I was just looked out there and I wondered how many of these young men would not be here. If they had a positive male role model in their life, mm. and on that on my way home that night, I actually called my wife on the way home. I say, "Look, I'm gonna stop teaching teaching in jail. I'm not coming back. I'm gonna find somewhere to volunteer and work with one young man mm. and pull my life into his life, help deter him from ever coming to jail, really show him what it's like to live life as a productive African American male in this country." Right. That's what I wanted to do. Wow. And that's when you called Big Brother. Yes, team. that was they had the only platform I knew that was already in place mm -hmm. to plug in and volunteer. That's fantastic. Yes. How did you end up choosing Joe, the young man that you mentored? Uh, actually, the agency chose him for me. Oh, okay. Once okay. I signed up, they did all my background checks. Once they vetted me, and they called me and said, we have a match for you. Right. And believe it or not, Jolan was already on the waiting list for almost five years. Wow. Yes. And he was, all, he, was on, he was already sitting on the waiting list. Wow. And they matched us and drove we drove to the house, and right. I met him. I, I had a chance to meet him. Wow. Now, how did they go about matching him with you? How does that work? Uh, they look at similar interests. Right. Okay. When they interview me or mm -hmm. what I like, and I, they already have a profile built on the kids. Okay. And they kind of, <laughs> similar interest, they, they kind of match them. Yeah. Um, it was more sports. I, I, right. I mean, I, I outdoors also. Right. Outdoor activity, yes. <laughs> That's what's up. And uh, when you met, um, what were some of the things that you noticed right away that, this is going to be a good relationship. We, I had to find an icebreaker okay. to talk to him, and, okay. it, and I used sports. And he was, even as a fourth grader at the time when I met him, he was very knowledgeable 
Right. They come to especially football and basketball. Oh, wow. Not just the game, but the, the, <laughs> the, the, these players, the professional players, college players. Stats, all that yeah, stuff. Exactly. And I said, wow, okay, we can talk now. Right. And But I knew what I wanted to do with him. Right. I wanted to just broaden his, just kind of broaden his horizon a little bit. Right. But we, right. I, sports is kind of our vein. That's right. our conversation. Right. Yes. Were you nervous? I, I was not. Um, if I was a little anxious because I wanted to, I wanted to make sure it was going to be a good match. Right. And I wanted to find out. I, I, one thing about me, I love a challenge. Right. You know, I'm always up <laughs> for a challenge. So I wasn't really too concerned about him not opening up immediately and nothing like that. But I was more was anxious for him. Make gotcha. sure he wanted to be motivated and continue this match. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. You know, now, when, when it comes to mentorship, mm -hmm. uh, something like Big Brother and Big Sister, mm -hmm. that's pretty much like a marriage. Yeah, it is. You know, you're going into it like a marriage, and I, I think you should not look at it as it doesn't work out, I'm out. Because right. that can destroy a kid. Yes, it can. Because I've known so many people that um, they meet a, a big brother, I mean, a little brother or a little sister, mm -hmm. and no more than a month or two, they're gone. It's like, man, this kid is still doing the same thing. I'm like, you just met him. <laughs> you know, uh, it's going to take a minute. It, it, it does. Uh, do you, un you understood that? I, I did. Okay. I Okay. And one of the things that I understood also right. was to never break a promise with this kid. Right. If I promised him we're mm -hmm. going here, I would be here, make sure I did everything to get there. Right. But what really helped our match and still helped his mother is so supportive. Oh, good. She's very supportive. Good. That's um, important. And she know what I normally I, I, I would call her. I would ask her, can Jolan be available on this day, this time? She said, right. I'll, make, I'll make sure he's ready. Right. Um, but she's very supportive. But I, I made myself a promise from day one. If I promise Jordan something, I will never break that promise. Wow. And that's that marriage sport right there. And that, Absolutely. That's how we, I, was able, I was able to build trust with him and his mother. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that and it just it just blossomed from there. Right. Um, he would just he would, he would if I say I'm gonna do something, he'd know how to do it. Right. Um, there's been a few times where I had a work conflict or something happened in, in the family. I said, Well I need to reschedule to tomorrow right. or maybe next week. And I'm, I made good on my promise. And what is that extra mile that some instances you had to go for Jolin? That I, separates you from other brothers and big brothers because you're the national big brother of you. <laughs> yes. Um, in the entire country. So that's big. It is. Um, yes. What makes Murray special? Um, one, I'm not afraid to talk to Jolin about anything in life. Okay. That, that's number one. Right. And I make sure I'm important in him something that will help him take him to the next step, the next step, and the next step. Right. One of the things that we do, uh, we, hadn't done it, we hadn't done this in about a year, or we, in the early years, I would go up to Pilot Mountain, and we would hike the mountain. Mm. <laughs> and we would just talk, and just talk about life. He was intrigued by my military background also. Okay. So we would talk about that as we walked, but I would just share everything about that I could about life with him. And his age group also. Um, what he's going to be facing, what what he face in middle school, in high school. He's high school, he's a high school football player now. Right. And going the extra mile is you know, sometimes just teaching them things that uh, kids his age probably wouldn't even see. Mm -hmm. Give me a good example. I had to redo some flower beds in my yard one day. And I called his mom. I asked, I said, mm. can Jolin come over and help me? I said, I'll be using power tools. <laughs> uh, he won't use, I, I didn't let him use the saw, but I let him use, I told him I'd use a drill. And and I took pictures before and after pictures. I wanted him to see, you know, how, starting the project and the completion of it. And I, oh, mm. of course, I paid him. He didn't know that I was going to so paint him. <laughs> he, yeah. he didn't know I was going to paint him. Right. I paid him for, you know, and I showed him. This is, the, I'm showing you how to build something. I'm going to show you how to work for which for money. And I paid him at the end. I, his mom knew I was going to paint him. He didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you gave him two very important things. Mm -hmm. um, the important of when you start something, finish it. Yes, yes. Um, and also, uh, how to start earning money. Exactly. And and hard work pays off. Yes, it does. So you taught them with three <laughs> fantastic things. Um, what about your lifestyle, your personal lifestyle? What about your lifestyle? Give me three things that is good for Jolin to see. One, uh, I'm a man of my word. Okay. That's number one. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm going to do it, I would do it. I'm a very hard worker. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that comes from my father. He taught me how to work hard. And number two, I try to be honest with everybody. I'm just straight up honest. Uh, I shoot from the hip sometimes, but I'm straight up with you. And I, I impart that in him. 
And I, another thing, I teach Joel how to be well-rounded. Get out of your comfort zone. I'm mm -hmm. I take him places and purposely do that. I get him out of his comfort zone. I put him around people who don't look like him. Mm. But I'm gonna show you how you can still assimilate and blend in this crowd here. You have to. Exactly. You have to. Yes. Um, how open was he when he first met you to all the different things? He, he was, this is a new, pretty much a new world. It, 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 okay. Exactly. How, how he, open he, was he was actually pretty receptive. Okay. Uh, because I took the time and explained every step through the process. To what you. you were doing exactly. and where you were going. Yes. That's good. What kind of things you guys do together? Oh wow. No pile of mountain. Invite me next time. I'm <laughs> okay. I've been promising my children that since yep. they were like eight, they're like seventeen now. <laughs> I hope it's not too late. They'll be bored. But no, no. I, I've been I, trying I, to get good. there myself. We, we yeah. go to hike the hike short trail. <laughs> um, we we go to sports game, uh, pro sports game. As okay. a matter of fact, he's a LeBron fan. LeBron. Okay, James. okay. When LeBron played with the Heat, they came to Charlotte two days after Christmas right, one year. Right. And my wife and I surprised him. That was our Christmas gift to him. Right. We took him down to the game. Right. We've been down to the close to the Panther Stadium. Right. Um, and do you pay for the tickets? Yes. yes. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. I got to hook up. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> and. Um, Bowling, we, we used to bowl with bowl and air hockey. Okay. They, they, now, I, I, and it's funny. <laughs> I can win in bowl, but I can never beat him in air hockey. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He would smash me in air hockey. Right, right. But, uh, so, and, and you, what we do a lot, this is where we get a lot of quality time in. He loves sports. I love sports. Right. We go out to a restaurant, a, book, a, sports, a sports bar and grill, and sit there <laughs> for three or four hours watching the game yeah. and just talking. Right. And I let him educate me on all the players and and I, but I always start the conversation with education and school. Right. And I make sure I end it with that. Oh, that's just, good. Just talking life to That's people. good. Um, have you, your wife met him, obviously. Oh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. how, how does she take to Joe uh, she, and she him loved, to her? She, she loved him. And they, they both loved being around each other. They respect okay. each other. What we do with Joe a lot, we take him out to dinner with us a lot. Okay. And that's, my, that's our quality time. But I, I let him see a family environment also. That's fantastic. And I, I let him sit with us. Tell what I did the first time we took him out to dinner. I took him to a restaurant I worked at in high school. And the sons run a restaurant mm. And I asked one of the sons, can I take him in the back mm. and show him the job I did in high school. I took him back to the dishroom. Dude, that's what's up. And they, we, stood, we stood back there, and I, and I walked him through the whole dishroom, took him to the kitchen. I said, this is where I worked <laughs> while I was, when I was in high school. Wow. And, that's and, deep. and he, he thoroughly enjoyed that. That's deep. You guys been together for five years? Yes, a little, a little more than five years. Uh, how do you think it, this has Change Jolin for the best. I think it's giving Jolin. I call it. I call it reasoning from the known to the unknown. Basically, it's caused it's caused Jolin to Jolin to look down the road now mm -hmm. and set goals in his life mm -hmm. and show how you, you can achieve these goals. Right. And more and also be aware of his immediate surroundings. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> we talked about and, and I don't sugarcoat anything with him. I, 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 before he got to high school, I told him, I said, Joe, you're going to see a different world in high school. You're going to see the good and the bad now. And we talked about it. Every week we would talk about what happened good in the school, what happened bad. And I told him, don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. That's life. Right. You will see this. Right. You know, you just got to know how to navigate around it. And don't be ashamed to tell you about it. Exactly. Right. Yes. The good and the bad. The good and the bad. Because you know a lot of teenagers that have that a habit of not telling you everything. You're um, right. Uh, how did it help Murray? This How did Jolin help you? Oh, wow. For one, <laughs> he helped me to be a pretty good listener. Okay. That's important. Because a lot of times I would just, I start a conversation now and I, I approach it just be quiet and mm -hmm. let him talk. It taught me how to listen to his age group. Right. And really understand really what mm -hmm. they're facing. And what I do, I go back and dissect what he's dealing with and know how to take it the next conversation. Right. And he's really taught me how to listen to him. That's good. And that's called listening without an agenda. Exactly. And the agenda is all about the person you're yes. communicating with. Mm -hmm. That's great. The number one communication skill is the ability to listen. Yes. When you can master listening, exactly. yeah, the power of silence, you got that thing. Yes. Yes, without a doubt. Um, what, is, what do you want for Jolin? What is your ultimate goal for him? He, he, he plays football. Mm -hmm. What is his dream? Jolin's dream is really to go to college. Go to college wow. and become... Basically, he doesn't know what profession yet. Uh, he's thinking both college and military. Okay. And um, and I, I I've kind of mapped it out for him. If you do this, you go to officer candidate school or something like that. Right. Um, he's very he's an honest student, a very bright young man. Right. But his whole goal is to be productive in life. 
Okay. Uh, he's not even focusing on football career. Right. He, he enjoys playing football. He's more or less focusing on the ability of his brains, his academic career to propel mm -hmm. him to where he wants to be. And what do you see, Joel? What, what do you, when you think of Joel and during that five years, what have you said to your wife or maybe his mom or, or to yourself, this is where Jolin should be in the next 10 years? I tell him, I say, Joel, the sky's the limit for Jolin. Right. He is so focused right now. And when he sets his eyes on a target, he, he makes sure he's bullying. Right. And nothing but success. Nothing but success. Nothing but success. Um, I told him, and I no, always. No specific thing, just success. Yes, and I That's always make sure, I mean, I, I encourage him. I, I had a, I have a scene. It's an old scene. <laughs> and I, I, I told all the inmates this same thing. I said, never let right. nobody tell you what you can't do in life. Right. And I see Joel really going to any profession he wants to go in. Mm -hmm. He wants to go in. Um, I tell his mom, don't be hesitant to let him apply to Ivy League schools. He has the brains to get in there. Right. Let him apply anywhere and everywhere. My wife and I promised him we would help him apply for college and pay for the application fees. Wow. We would make sure he can apply to any college he wants to apply to. Well, I, I told him we, <laughs> wow. and we, told him we didn't care where it's at. If, right. it's, if it's in California, we'll fly there and see you. Right. We'll make sure because the, the match that we have is for life. Right. It, it, we, we will be matched for life. Then when you met Jolin and talked to his mom, mm -hmm. why did she want him to have a mentor? Her whole goal was she wanted him to have a male role model okay. to, teach him, mm -hmm. to teach him how to be a man in life. Mm -hmm. That was her entire goal. Right. He needed a male in his life. Right. And um, it was just a God scene when we matched. I, right. I told the National Conference when we were up there in, uh, in St. Louis, say, I have the best little brother <laughs> in the country. <laughs> I have the best little brother in the country. Even though he's 6'3 now. Wow. 6'3, okay. 240. <laughs> yeah. He's a big dude. Oh, yes. Yeah, football is for him. He's the basketball. Oh, yes. Um, we've heard all the glory mm -hmm. times. In, in all things in life, mm -hmm. there's some challenges. There are. What are some of the challenges, if you don't mind sharing on camera, that uh, you and Joel have had in the beginning? Or maybe still now? Well, there, there were no big challenges. He he had a few rough spots in middle school. Okay. And where I went, I had to go to the house and just sit and talk with him. Okay. And explain, you know, you know a few hiccups here, uh, being a little agitated with the teachers or, or other students, getting right. into the skirmishes. And I would talk to him. Um, and to be honest, when I talked to him, I talked to him as a father, right. instead of a mentor. Right. And really mm -hmm. laid down on him. I said, look, this is <laughs> the road you don't want to go down. Right. And, I, and what I did, I pulled back from my life, trouble I got in the school. And I let him know, and I, and I don't sugarcoat anything, I don't hide any conversation from him. I tell him I know without mentioning names, I had friends that went down that road. And they couldn't get off that road. Right. And it, it destroyed their lives. And he he, um, he straightened it back up in eighth grade. He got it right in eighth grade before he came out of school. That's what's up. Uh, he got in a little, <laughs> little, little skirmish last year um, at school in ninth grade. He snatched the chain off his neck or something. Mm. And he kids going to be kids. Yeah, exactly. And Joel's a big kid. I don't know why they tried it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, one thing that is so fantastic, and I say this pretty much on the, during any, every interview, because of you, Jolin now understands that you're going to go through, but it's how you choose to get through it. Exactly. And go through it. And uh, he has a positive and, uh, way to get through things now. Yes, he, does. He, he understands that he has a lot to look forward to. He's not going to blow that. You're right. Um, I can see why you are uh, the national big brother. Uh, <laughs> That's a big deal, man, because you, you came in. When you came in, you came in. Yes. You took big steps with this young man. And uh, leaving no um, stone unturned. Exactly. And that's a big deal. Uh, finally, let's talk about um, how important is what you teach them about God to you and your wife and his mom. Is that an open it relationship? Is. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, he understands, he and his mom, they understand my faith, my belief. Right. And I always share with Joe and my faith in God, right? In in, in in different different conversations, right? How I lean back, my like, you know, I I I have degrees, accolades, this that that, but my rock is my my my, my salvation. That's that's my rock there, and and, and and that's where I stand. I even told Joel how how I became to go to church. You know what what, what led me to go to church? Uh, I didn't grow up in church, 
um, my house, we didn't go to church in, uh, until I, right before I went to the military, I started going. And that's been my solid foundation of my faith. Wow. Uh, studying, even studying the Bible, uh, being a Bible teacher. Studying, and, and I tell them all, all of my resources I pull out the Bible. <laughs> uh, I published a book 11 years ago on drug addiction. Because I taught inmates for 20 years, and 80% of the national, national average 80%. Of men and women are their own drug related crimes. So right. I, I talk the subject in there from a biblical perspective and I put it in book form. And I share that with you. And I would, that, it was so easy for me to write the book because I knew the material from the Bible. Right. And I share different, anything he wants to talk about, I share that with him. I let him know where my faith lies. With. I think that's where that trust comes from. Yes. With Joel and you, mm -hmm. you open up to him, that and that's important for young people to know your bottom. Yes, and that's the thing because you're doing fantastic for yourself now, and for Joel to come, for you to come into his life, mm -hmm. um, if you didn't share your bottom, you'd almost be untouchable for him. You're right. I can't do that, but you're like, no, no, I started from the bottom. Now I'm here. <laughs> exactly. Right, right, right. So yeah. that's a big deal because a lot of people don't share their bottom once they make it, especially with black men. You're we right. get so proud. Yes. And we don't want anyone to know anything other than where we are now. So I, pr I really appreciate that, man. Um, as we close, what would you recommend to young men out there, our age, your age, that is considering mentoring or that are mentoring? What would you recommend? You got three what? different things you would share with them that help them have a successful relationship. First, like for you. those who are on the, on the fence. Right. Who consider maybe should I, should not. Right. First, what I would always tell uh, me, you don't have to be that far Right. You a role model. <laughs> you 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 want to show them life through your eyes. Don't worry about being. You don't right. have to raise them. You, know, you be them. Just be there for them <laughs> to teach them and talk to them. Every man has something that has a story. We we all have a story. We can teach somebody. Um, go ahead and do it. Number two, you're not too busy. I'm a branch. I run a branch here. Um, some days I'm here at six thirty at night, seven o'clock. I'm a math instructor at Forsyth Tech. I have a wife. But I still find time to work with your work Joe We were together last night. I got hungry. I went and picked him up. Let's go get something to watch TV at, mm -hmm. at a restaurant. I had to go to a sports store. He went there with me. And I was like, you, that, that's, that's how you can squeeze time in. Right. If I got to go to the mall, I take him with me. And we can walk and talk at the same time. You know, no one is too busy out there. Right. Um, for the men who are mentoring, don't be afraid to talk about anything in life, mm -hmm. especially the pitfalls, the roadblocks that face these young men. Give a good example, my fraternity, I'm, I'm a member of Omega Psi Phi. One of the things that we learned uh, and that we pride is something called being a bitch. I didn't notice the bracelet. <laughs> 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 anyway, go ahead. Being, being a bridge builder. Right. <laughs> if I cross a valley or stream or a rough spot in life, if I go through it, I go back and build a bridge over it mm. for that young man coming behind me. That's good. If, if, you know, my, my parents taught me something as a young man. It's an old saying. Don't never forget where you come from. I I, I interpret it. I kind of re repackage it. Every hurdle I cross in life, I reach back and grab someone else. That's mm -hmm. what I do with Joe. I'm not, I, I let them know this is where I messed up. This is where I failed. Right. This is what I want, want you to do. Right. I'm, I'm going to show you how to beat these obstacles in life. You have some awesome parents. They, 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 were, they were rough on me. <laughs> yeah. It's a good it thing, paid, though, right? It paid, it paid off. It paid off. Look at you now. Yeah, it, it um, scared to ask this because I like you. Mm -hmm. But I think here's where the problem's going to come. <laughs> Who's your football team? Pittsburgh Steelers. Are we good? Okay. Oh, this is not hey, Dallas. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. No. <laughs> we, see, you feel I'm a 49er fan. Okay, okay. Favorite okay. basketball team? Well, I was, of course, I'm going to state now. I'm Golden State too, yeah, dude. We, I, 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 but I like, I like you, my dude. I, but I was always a San Antonio fan because okay. I like Popovich. Okay, Pop was one of the best coaches I think. I he had. is the best he, coach. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. And San Antonio was like a mirror image of. I mean, I'm not saying uh, Golden State is a mirror image of San Antonio. They sure are. <laughs> yes, all y'all. Yep. <laughs> not you know what Curry, Durant, superstars. Oh yes, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, great team players. That's what they are. And San Antonio was a great team. Yes, they were. And uh, I. I give a lot of credit to uh, uh, Mark Jackson, though. Oh, hey, that was his team. That was his team. <laughs> that was his team. And, okay, cool. <laughs> yes. Jolin's team. Who is his favorite team? Football, basketball. Football, Green Bay Packers. Okay. Yes, I, I, I do. Okay. I, I, I bought, and I always, I, I give him his props. I think Aaron Rodgers is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Right. Uh, hands right. down. 
basketball, um, he's more Cleveland. He, okay. he, he, follows, he follows LeBron. Okay. Anywhere LeBron goes. So they ain't going to roll with the Lakers. Lakers yeah, okay. he, he's a Laker man. <laughs> we talked about that last night. Oh, man. He's, 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 he's going to be a Laker man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he follows players when it comes to basketball. Without a doubt. Yes. Well, when uh, basketball season starts, don't worry about tickets. I got you covered. Okay, okay thank you so And much. I look forward to going to some games with you and meeting Joe. I, I, I would yeah. love for you to meet him. Yeah. This is an awesome young man. I mean, he, he's a, He's a, he's a big young man. Now. Yeah. A lot of my fraternity brothers, they joke. They, they, when I put this stuff out there on Facebook, the pictures, of course, they hit me back. They want to know who's the little brother. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, he towels me now. <laughs> oh, my God. And cute dog. Something else, bro. Hey. Yeah. So, uh, man, listen, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. No doubt, man. If something ever go down, Joe going to be getting your back, right? Yeah. <laughs> Get him, Joe. You know No, that. you're the big brother. <laughs> And what I, what I try to do, I let him meet everybody I know. Yeah. That, I mean, from my family, everybody. I let, I let Jordan see people. Yeah. People doing their thing in life. Absolutely. And that, that just inspires him. Absolutely. I, what, in closing, I want I like to share one thing with you. Oh, yeah, take your time. We went over to the Civil Rights Museum when he was a fifth grader okay. in Greensboro. Yeah. And when we left the museum, we stepped out on the sidewalk. He stopped. He said, hey, Mr. Miller, you know what? I'm so thankful somebody has sacrificed their life for me. Oh, wow. He 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 captured that mm -hmm. entire that entire uh that uh the interview I mean not the interview the um uh, the, the the tour he captured all of it as a fifth grader mm -hmm. and that's when I say this is a sharp young man wow. he understood ten years the, old the and understood understood the struggle wow yes yeah, so that that's that's why I say he the sky's the limit for this young man you were God sent to him because now you're keeping that going oh yes oh yes appreciate <laughs> you too thank you thank you you sir. got it all right. <laughs>